Let me express how pleased I am to participate in this particular press conference this morning, having been a member not only of the delegation of St. Kitts and Nevis that went on to COP27, but being a member of the government that since it was placed in office on the 5th of August, has been engaged in several discussions in the Caribbean and um, globally in order to prepare ourselves and at the same time lend our support to the framing of the agenda that was being debated at our conference in Egypt. In other words, <clears throat> we got into office on the 5th of August of this year. A new government was put in position, put in place. It has several ministers of government who were appointed. And since then, each, I believe, had been tasked in preparing himself or herself with information that was critically important to support our position as we debated with persons from all over the world in this very important conference in Egypt. In other words, we have been to the United Nations, we have been to the, the Organization of American States. We have been to discussions with the European Union in trying to frame what would be our development agenda as we interact with our fellow states from Africa, from the Caribbean, and of course from the Pacific area. I remember, for example, when we were at the United Nations in September, there was a series of side meetings, one of which was with the delegation from Egypt. And that interaction between CARICOM and the delegation from Egypt there at the United Nations included the chairman who was going to be cheering the COP conference in Egypt. And we were making the point as CARICOM leaders that there have to be certain specific topics on the agenda for COP27. What were some of these things? We were saying, for example, that we wanted to impress to the rest of the world that the concept of multidimensional vulnerability index was going to be critical for us to get acceptable or acceptance at the COP27 conference. We were also making the point in those forums that we have attended in framing the agenda, that there has to be a coming together of minds with regard to the loss and damage concept or idea that we wanted the rest of the world to accept in order to give us from small states a chance to survive in the future. And so I want to say that, in particular, these were two of the important outcomes at COP27. There was an acceptability of the concept of multi of multidimensional vulnerability index. In other words, even though countries like St. Kitts and Nevis were considered to be re relatively high, capa 
high income. high income countries, high per capita income countries, even though we had been graduated in the past out of concessionary support from those international financial organizations which were assisting us. Even though we were considered to be high-income or middle-income countries, we nevertheless suffered tremendous loss and damage from the climatic conditions which were being caused as a result of environmental disruption caused by those large industrialized countries that were emitting large quantities of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, disturbing the entire environment, and thus contributing to hostile hurricanes that destroyed us down here, our infrastructure and our people's livelihoods on several occasions. So it was really an amazing experience to see the rest of the world converging for at least maybe nearly two weeks at a place called Sharm El Sheikh in Egypt, just off the Red Sea coast, to debate these very issues that we have been saying for years needed to be brought to the attention of the world so that countries like St. Kitts and Nevis, small island developing states, could really survive and have better livelihoods. The argument, therefore, was that we are people too. They may be small, but we are people. We have a right to exist. We have a right to develop our agriculture so that we can feed ourselves properly. We don't want to be beggars to the rest of the world. Our young people have the right to aspire to the top education that they can receive. Using information technology, which we were being deprived of as a result of the hostilities and the continued disruption of our people's livelihoods. We wanted that to change. We believe that our people have the right to cheap energy. Why should we continue to burn oil or diesel to generate electricity at high prices being paid by our consumers? And we can harness the energy from the sun. And we can generate energy from windmills, where it is cheaper, where we can have the development of our geothermal energy in Nevis, and not only become consumers of energy that is imported in, into our country, but become a net exporter of energy to the rest of the islands around us, making life easier for us. COP27 was the place to bring those arguments and to see the world, the industrialized world, react on the pressure to the demands of people from small island developing states, those from the alliance of the organization of small island developing states, and those who had been told for years that because you have a high per capita income, you cannot get support of financing and funding unless you pay high interest rates. That is what we have been told for years. 
And we were saying that you can't just simply look at the high per capita income of countries, but look at how vulnerable, how vulnerable they are to climate change, which to a large extent was contributed by the industrialized world. And consider this as an important matrix to determine whether a country should receive assistance or not. And so my experience at COP27 was an amazing one. I was at the COP in Copenhagen, I think it was back in 2014. But this was different because people spoke out people demanded, people demanded recognition of ideas which for years went along the way, unnoticed. And so I believe that the acceptability of the MVI, the acceptability that there is need for a fund no longer a billion dollar fund, but a trillion dollar fund. Not that we are asking that there be reparation, that you pay us for the damage you have caused us over the years, hundreds of years, but that you come and sit at the table with us and recognize that there's something called climate justice. And there's something now called climate action, which is determined to ensure that justice is delivered. That was my experience at COP27. Thank you.